Hello and welcome back to another Max MSP tutorial. I am Andrew Robinson and in this video we are going to continue our intro into Jitter and today we are going to talk about how to combine videos because there's tons of ways you can combine videos and they're all really cool and create really cool effects and it's a super useful skill. Everyone's got to know how to combine videos if you want to do stuff with Jitter so let's just jump right into it shall we? First things first always we're going to create a jit.world we're going to say at floating one at FSA, one at FS menu bar zero. And in my last Jitter video, we talked about the difference between jit.world and jit.window. We're gonna just go with jit.world from here on out because it really is simpler. We're just gonna connect a toggle into it, lock our patch, which you can do by, if you're on a Mac computer, holding the command button, clicking anywhere in the blank space, and then clicking the toggle. Our patch is locked, this is now on and rendering, and we can unlock our patch and go back to editing. So we've got our window to view stuff. Um, we just need basically we're gonna need two things we're gonna we're gonna use two different things we're gonna use jit.grab which is going to open up our webcam and we're gonna patch that into a jit.gl.video plane with the at transform reset to attribute this is going to put a video plane in our world for us to view things and then we just have to send the open message to jit.grab to open it and turn on the webcam and there I am if you're using a jit.window you're gonna also have to send a bang to this jit.grab to get your frames but with jit.world we don't have to worry about that so that's all taken care of the second jitter object we're going to use today is jit.grab movie and I'm gonna say at vault zero just so no sound comes through and rather than an open message jit.movie needs a read message to read a movie file off of a disk and I uh, actually I've got a lot of movie files um, but they're all animations I've made so we're just gonna use this one it's uh, black and red and it'll be really interesting I think and so uh, if we patch that into the jit.gl video plane we'll see that animation there and same thing uh, because we're using a jit.world this doesn't need bangs to output but if we were using jit.window it would so keep that in mind um, depending on which one you're doing and now that we have two movie files here basically the webcam and an actual movie we can do whatever we want to combine these together and it's the exact same as if you were doing any kind of other operation in Mac. So, you know, you can add two numbers together. We can literally add two video planes together, which we're going to do using the jit.add object. And we're going to just patch our jit.grab into one inlet, and we're going to add that to whatever goes into the other inlet, which we're going to use this movie file. And there you go. This is the visual being added to the video and it makes sense what's going on as we saw in the original video it's like a black background with a lot of red so black you know in pixels is zero 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 uh no color across any of the red green or blue spectrum we've talked about that before in our other intro to Jitter videos and so basically you're just adding zero to whatever number is uh making up these other pixels in the video and so nothing changes there but this, uh, these red spots, they're really close to one on the red channel and probably pretty close to zero on the green and blue. So again, we're just, you know, adding basically a red tint to the video and, um, you know, depending on whatever video this was, we change the colors in that way. Uh, and multi or addition is not the only thing we can do. We can also multiply. So if we multiply, it's going to be pretty similar, except now we're multiplying these pixels by zero. So wherever it's black, it's going to stay black. That's basic multiplication basic mathematics uh, and then same thing when we uh, are here in this red we're multiplying the pixel values uh, of that uh, of whatever is in the webcam by this red pixel and thus we get an even darker uh, red tint to the video and this looks pretty cool and literally this is it we're just multiplying two videos together um, so you know video source information whatever you're actually using to you know uh, mix these videos together can create a lot of different results literally just with the simplest things um, addition and multiplication isn't the only options we have we can subtract and uh, we'll get this cool like negative kind of effect we can divide um, which is also you know a pretty kind of cool negative pixelated effect because we're just you know now we're dividing the pixel values there's also modulation which we can do and you also get a pretty crazy interesting pixelated effect with these uh, and uh, the val what this looks like will also you know always also depend on the video animations you have running in here so we're not because you know the black is zero that's we're getting normal colors through but if this video was just 
you know all kinds of colors we'd have all kinds of crazy weird pixelated effects here um and that's pretty crazy if you wanted to uh you don't have to put the operation signs in this jit dot object either there is jit dot op which stands for operation and it is the exact same thing as what we are uh, just looking at it's just all the operations are combined into one so we can attach an adder UI into the jit.op, click on it, and here's all the possible operations we can do to combine these videos. We saw plus, multiplication, divide, uh, subtract, but you know, there's other ones. You can absolute, you take the absolute difference. You can take the sign. You can, you know, wrap one video into the other. You can take the uh, power of one, or the video, and raise it to the power of the other. You know, these, uh, these all have different results in the end that uh, create really cool effects and you can you can you know just experiment and play with those all day long um, and even binary operations is also not the only way to combine videos in max MSP we can do all kinds of other things too we can do crossfades and that would be the jit.x fade object so if we just take our patch cores and remove them from the op and patch them into our jit.x fade object and we're going to patch that into the video plane uh, right now we are x faded all the way to the left so we are only seeing what is in the left inlet and if we attach an adder ui to our x fade object which you can press a to create one patch it in there it's going to show you the attributes for that object we can then go to the x fade attribute and slowly uh, move this value up from zero to one and then once it hits one we will be completely faded into the next video so 0.5 is halfway between both and you see the result is more of a crossfade effect rather than adding the values or multiplying the values. so it looks slightly different and once again once again this is not the only way we can combine videos crossfade great great option but we also can alpha blend which is probably the most realistic looking of these um, ways to mix videos together it's also slightly the most complicated i have another video on it you can check that out it's a little bit more advanced so let's just talk about the basic concepts of alpha blend just dot alpha blend is blending two videos together based on the alpha channel right now nothing is blending and that is because our alpha channel for our jit grab is ones all across the board it is like it doesn't understand any sense of transparency so we can actually do some stuff to adjust this real quick to make this blend work um, and we're going to use some tools we've seen before already in our other intro videos. We're going to use jit.unpack to unpack our webcam matrices into the alpha RGB plane, each one individually. And then we're going to pack together, we're going to pack back together the red, which is our second outlet, green, and blue. And the first one is our alpha inlet. This is what we want to change. And we can, there's a lot of different ways you can change the value of the, uh, alpha um, one of the easiest ways I like to do is just to use the jit.rgb to luma object and this is going to take our webcam it's going to see all three of the color planes the red green and blue and it's going to convert it down into one black and white plane um, that is it's basically just black and white if we patch that directly into the video plane we'll see it's black and white and now we're also sending that through this patch cord into our jit.pack so this black and white image we're seeing is now our alpha plane value rather than what was the original alpha plane value which was just all white as we can see if we patch the unpack outlet here into the jit.geo video plane so we're going to go back to the alpha plane our rgb luma is packed into the jit.pack and so are the other important color planes so now if we just patch that into the jit.alpha blend we'll see we are in fact getting that alpha bend look effect back and it's pretty similar to the crossfade but you know depending on what we actually set for these alpha values and such um we can get a lot of crazy different results in this jit.op we saw there were other options there's also um boolean options for jitter where you can say if this uh is jit dot greater than or equal to and you can define a value let's say like i don't know point two so if any of the pixel values are greater than 0.2, um, it will become a, it will return a true, so it will return a completely white pixel. Um, and if it's not greater than 0.2, it's going to turn black. So if we patch our jit.rgb luma into that greater than or equal to object, patch that out to our video plane, we can see exactly what I'm talking about. Everywhere where it is greater than 0.2 is now completely white because it is returning a true value. And let's, uh, let's increase this. Um, so we'll get a little bit more of like kind of a thresholded image 
Um, yeah, that's literally what we're doing. We're just thresholding pixel values. So let's say uh, this was our alpha value now. What would that look like if we patch that in as the final result? And you see um, it's a little, you know, pixelated, but we also get a crazy cool blending effect. Um, and there's a lot of different techniques we can actually do to smooth this out. I highly recommend checking out my other alpha blending tutorial video um, for some of those techniques. Um, but again, you know, here are some, there's are just basic ways we can combine different videos. Let's, uh, let's copy all of this. Why not? And let's just do the same thing to our movie. Uh, we'll run the movie into the unpack. We'll run the movie into the RGB Luma. Everything else is already patched in. So we'll just patch that into the alpha blend. And, uh, it actually didn't change much there, but, um, we have this fun feature with the jit.alpha blend object to change how exactly it does the blending and that's the crossfade mode and by default it's left to right so let's see if uh, right to left does anything different and it does it inverts them so now um, <laughs> the white space is actually where it's blending so we get this cool like fake green screen effect you could use this probably with a real green screen or something um, and that's that's pretty cool, just like that. <laughs> I'm a little, you know, fuzzy, but it looks amazing and uh, it's fun. And there's so much more we could do with this stuff too, because, you know, the combinations happen. Um, they can happen however you want them to happen. There's no right or wrong answer for how to combine these. It's all basically based on what you want to do. We could, you know, alpha blend this together and then we could, I don't know, just add back in the original video file. I don't know how it's going to look. Um, you know a little bit brighter obviously that makes sense because we're just adding the original pixel values in let's try multiply obviously okay that makes it darker as we've known we could do the abs different if I get rid of the multiplication sign that's a pretty cool effect because now we've got the uh, the inverted look um, and I don't know, but literally what I'm trying to say here basically is you can there's no right or wrong answer if you like how this looks um, then go for it. That's like so cool. That's that's the answer right there for you. Um, I guess one last thing I'm going to show real quick we can do uh, is we can also, you know, since we're parsing these out into the individual planes, why not just like try some binary operations on the individual planes? Um, since this video is really red, let's just like, you know, I don't know what this is going to do or how it's going to look, but let's just add to our red plane of our webcam, the red plane of the movie and okay it makes it more red what if we added to the red plane the green does that do anything no not really um blue uh, there's a little bit more red coming through you that you can experiment and play with these all day long and just find the coolest results um and there's like i'm saying there's no right or wrong answer it's really kind of whatever you want to do that doing it on the blue channel obviously adds some more blue to the mix which is also pretty cool and um yeah i don't know man there's just so much we could do uh and experiment with to really you know make these look really interesting and um mixed really well and it's just playing with these values at these thresholding um and you know however you want to combine these plain information so that's uh that's gonna be it i'm gonna leave it there it was a pretty simple video um but these are, you know, again, just the basics of Jitter. We're just talking about different ways to combine videos together. And then you have so many options to do that. There's the JIT.OP, JIT.XFade, JIT.AlphaBlend. Um, and there's honestly, there's even more. These are just the basic ones um, that uh, really help to know when you first get started with doing Jitter stuff. So hopefully that was helpful to you guys. Hopefully you learned something you didn't know before. If that is the case, if this was helpful, please remember to like and subscribe because that lets me know I'm doing a good job. Sorry, my teeth are really red. <laughs> it's really funny. Um, and if anybody has any questions or comments, please leave those in the comment section down below. Um, I will answer those uh, when I can. Um, and also, if anybody has any suggestions for any future tutorial videos, uh, I'm happy to take a look at those too because I want to make things that people are finding actually useful and sometimes it's hard to know exactly what that is for everybody. Um, so please leave those suggestions in the comments down below too and I will see you guys in the next video. Sorry again that my teeth are so red. <laughs> Alright, take care.